In this video, I'm gonna show you how to edit vlog photos in Lightroom. Make sure you stick around till the end because I'll show you a top tip that'll save you loads of time in the future. Let's start with the exposure. Now, once you import your vlog photos into Lightroom, they're gonna look really dark. And this is so it can retain a lot of the information in the picture, in all the shadows and the highlights. So don't worry if it looks dark, it's meant to look like that. So what I tend to do is push the exposure right up till it's nice and bright and you've leveled out the exposure to exactly how you want it. If you want it nice and dark, keep it dark, but I generally tend to push it up to about 1.3. Don't worry about pushing these files. If you've shot in RAW as well, there'll be plenty of information in there for you to use and recover. Once you've done the exposure, let's move on to the contrast. And I just add a little bit, just to add a little contrast into the image, but don't push this too far. I also like to drop the highlights down quite a bit, maybe even all the way, depending on the photo and bring the shadows up a fair bit. In vlog files, I find there's a lot of information in the shadows that you can push and be able to recover. I also like to bring the whites up a little bit and drop the blacks a little bit. This should add a little more contrast as well to your image. Moving down, now I move on to the curves and I try to add a little S curve into all the colors of the range. Now, you don't have to do this, but I like to have a film-like look in all of my photos. So doing this little S curve in it should add a little film-like look in your photos or just play around with it until you find something you like and it will suit your style. With the temperature, I tend to normally leave it on how it is because in the camera I have a couple of different settings and I normally, for outside, I shoot about five, six on the Kelvin and now this will make sure you have like a nice warm sort of level, equal playing field for when you're outside. If it's inside, I shoot at four, three and if it's like quite inside and dark, I shoot at three, two. But I normally tend to use the white balance to add the sort of mood into the image I want. So a lot of the photos I've been using recently, they have been really warm, so I bring it up to probably about 6,000. But you can bring it down if you want it nice and cool, depending on the style of the image you're going for. Now moving on to the tint, and I tend to add a little bit of tint into it. I normally bring it up to about plus 20. This is because I find that Vlog and Lumix and Panasonic picture profiles and the cameras in general have a lot of greens and yellows in them, so I like to balance that out by bringing up the tin into a more magenta color just to balance out the greens to the rest of the colors. Now moving on to the colors and this is down to a stylistic choice and completely up to you. However, for this set of photos, I want to add some really strong greens and blues because it's in the forest and sort of have some crunchy, woody, nice deep browns. I'm gonna add that now in the slider curves. But I suggest, depending on your photos, just have a little play around what works best and what suits your style, you know, create your own style that is unique to your photographs. I've been playing around with a lot of different styles recently. This one is a new one that I got inspired to do when I came back in the editing process. This is the time to have fun, play around with those colors and figure out, you know, a nice style that works for you and your photos. Moving on to the effects panel. Now I try to keep this quite nice and light because if you overdo it, it can look a bit nasty and cheap. So what I tend to do is bring the texture up a bit especially if it's like a landscape close-up I really like to show off like a textures of sand or leaves or wood or you know just to add a fair bit to it moving on to the clarity now I used to love this slider and I overused it so much now I absolutely hate it because I think it just looks cheap and nasty, but it's just completely up to you and how you edit your photos and what style you're going for. So what I tend to do is just drop the clarity a fair bit and just remove all of it all together. It mellows out the photo a fair bit and it's not as sharp. I don't normally add any days because I do that in the sky. If it's a sky, if there's sky in the photo, I'll have, add a sky mask later on and I'll add a bit of days there, but I don't tend to do it in the overall image. I'm not gonna color grade this image because I don't think it needs it uh, personally but have a play around with it if you want or if you want to know more about it leave a comment below in this video and if there's enough of you I'll do a video on how to color grade your photo so let me know in the comments below if that is something you would like to see. Now I try and sharpen up the image a fair bit about 40 or 50 percent quite like adding a bit of sharpness to it but if you add a bit of sharpness what I, I tend to do is I add a little bit of uh, noise reduction only a little 
little bit 10% because if you do too much of it, it starts to look cartoon like. So just add a little bit of that and same with the color uh, noise reduction, just add a little bit, not too much and don't overkill it. Make sure you remove uh, chromatic aberrations and lens correct. Make sure those boxes are ticked and you've got the right lens for the lens you use. I normally do this at the start, but I'm gonna do it at the end is I crop the image to exactly how I like it. You can do it in whatever aspect ratio you like. I tend to like 16 by nine or nine by 16 tall. This is for Instagram stories or I'm not even really bothering with doing square photos anymore. I don't really care for them. I don't have time for them. I just like taking photos. So I'm gonna do that in a nice wide aspect ratio. So it has all the details in there in the true nature. It's meant to be seen, not in this square format. So yeah, I tend to just, you know, edit it to the 16 by nine and then upload it like that. <laughs> At this point, I'd also add any masks. So if, like I said, if there's any sky, I'd add some sky masks to it. And then I play around with the days, the color and the clarity in the sky, um, but don't overkill it, don't blow it out. This can be really fun because now in Lightroom, there's an AI version of that. So you just click sky mask and it will do it for you. Or I use a linear gradient where I'll do the bottom or the top or I add different masks depending on the photo. But for this photo, I don't think it exactly needs it. So I'm gonna leave it how it is. Now time for my tip that I was on about at the start. Thank you very much for sticking around till this part of the video. Now my top tip is once you've completed your photo and you have it there and you're happy with it, now create this as a vlog preset on the side. When you take more vlog uh, photos in your camera, you can then come back to it and you can apply this preset that you've already done. And then this will take you a fair amount of the way already and then you just have to make a few adjustments rather than editing the whole photo Again, this will save you so much time in post production, especially if you're editing quite a lot of photos. This can save you so much time. So that is my top tip. And that's how I edit my vlog photos in Lightroom. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. If you did, you should check out my previous video that I made. It's all about the S5 and all the different picture profiles that are on the camera. I go through each one of them and explain what they do, which one is the best for you. Vlog is pretty good because it obviously retains a lot of information but there's other great ones out there so if you want to check that out I'll leave the link up there for you to check that out but thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one